I will talk about uh, a concept, basically a contest, called Enlighten Your Research. It's something that we started in 2007, so almost 10 years ago, in the Netherlands. I work for SurfNet, which is the NREN, the National Research Network in the Netherlands. And we developed this contest primarily because we had the uh, impression that researchers in our country, uh, we are a small country, 60 million people, and about 1 million people uh, are users of our services. And we had the impression that many of the researchers in the Netherlands did not have a clue about the services that we were uh, providing them. Sometimes they even didn't know what their local university was able to provide them with. And so we defined a contest in which a researcher could indicate uh, which uh, problems he or she encountered when doing research. Um, and, and of course, then the scope is ICT in a broad level. So we did not uh, try to map it immediately onto the services that we as an NRM provide. It could be anything, as long as it was related to ICT, of course. And we were aware of the fact that we could not uh, come up with solutions ourselves. We needed to partner with many other organizations. And then, uh, well, EAP, of course, was, uh, was uh, started a little while ago. We were all uh, part of that. And we were uh, very happy to learn that, that, that these countries were interested in the concept, probably for the same reason, getting to know uh, the researchers in your country and getting to know the problems that those researchers are facing on a daily basis. So what's the agenda for today? Well, basically three things. I'll say some words about the concept of Enlighten Your Research. I'll uh, explain how MIT research was organized here for the six uh, EAP countries. And then the most important thing is that uh, we have uh, this afternoon the awarding of uh, two winners um, that send it in proposals that have been awarded with a prize. And uh, I'll come to that in, at the end of, uh, of uh, this presentation. And the two winners will also explain the problems they are facing in their research and especially the solutions that they need from, from us as emirates. Okay, so a little bit of history. Uh, like I mentioned, we started this in the Netherlands in 2007. And in the meantime, we have seen that it attracted a lot of interest from researchers. Uh, so we have not ended after one edition, but in the meantime we've had already six editions. And during those uh, consecutive editions we learned a lot and we tried to incorporate those lessons in the uh, uh, additional editions that we organized. So this is sort of uh, the, uh, the history in one slide. We started in, uh, in uh, 2007 with the idea that for many researchers, uh, plain IP connectivity would not be uh, the ideal solution for their research. If you need a, a certain latency, or if you can't uh, have any uh, jitter, for instance, it might be nice to have a point-to-point -point link uh, in your own uh, NREN on a national level, or uh, from your own university to a university in another country. So the focus was there on point-to-point -point, uh, connections. And we did this contest, contest, this first generation, with NWO, which is probably unfamiliar to you, but it's the uh, scientific research organization in the Netherlands. They fund uh, research in the Netherlands, and so every researcher knows NWO, because that's where the money comes from. But more important for this uh, example is NWO knows all the researchers in the Netherlands. So we were able to lean on them when it becomes to uh, well, uh, where it concerns to, to reaching out to the researchers because we of course didn't know the one million uh, people that are using our services and uh, we needed to learn uh, to get to know them via NWO. So this was uh, this was very good. Uh, like I said, we learned a lot, especially when it comes to international light paths. In 2007, that was not a familiar concept. There were only a few NRENs supporting that. So we also had to fall back uh, on IP and then over-provision that uh, were needed. 
And then two years later, we did the same thing again, but uh, that was because we had a new concept called dynamic life paths, also known as uh, bandwidth on demand. Uh, and we thought that certain uh, applications, certain uh, types of research would uh, be uh, happy to make use of that, and that seemed uh, right, especially astronomers and uh, high energy physicists were very happy with us to provide that, and normally they would have to pay for that, or their ICT management would have to pay for those kind of services, but in this case, well, it was a contest, so they won a prize, and so they didn't have to pay for those dynamic life forms. Well, then in the third uh, generation, 2011, we broadened the scope. It was not just a network, but uh, we cooperated with SARA at the time. It's now called Surf SARA. It's incorporated in the NREM organization, and they are focusing on compute. Uh, the national supercomputer, for instance, is part of SARA, now Surf SARA as well as uh, uh, many storage solutions. And uh, one important thing that we learned during this, uh, the first and the second generation was that support is very important. Uh, just providing a light path or a bandwidth on demand uh, solution is not enough. You need the, the national component, but you also need the campus uh, on, on at least two locations. Uh, so you need a project manager that can oversee uh, the total construction and you need also support staff on the different campuses, so everyone needs to be committed. Uh, and we included Big Red because they also had important compute and storage uh, facilities that we could use. Well, then in 2013, it was the fourth generation, and we included the eScience Center, also part of SURF. They also work closely together on workflows with researchers. Uh, so we included workflow support and then about three years ago we uh, uh, tried to find a couple of other rents that were uh, willing to um, join us in an international um, edition of uh, NLITO research and you see all the logos um, uh, there and, and it still is a consortium that is organizing these contests uh, every few years so in 2015 we had another round with sort of the same uh, entrance. And Jayon is also uh, actively participating in that. So here you see that, uh, that we are global in 2013 and many entrants um, joined in. I hear a phone or is it something else? Okay. She couldn't I'll just continue. Um, so what are we basically looking for? Well, this slide says it all. We are basically looking for uh, collaborations of researchers uh, from any country, especially in the global contest, we're looking for uh, participants from any country and also any research domain. And um, what's, what's, what's that important is that high-performance networking uh, services can make a difference to the researcher. If that is uh, available, <laughs> then a major impact on research can be uh, created, and I'll have some uh, nice examples of that later on. So selected collaborations, it is a contest, so you need to select a certain uh, collaborations. They receive uh, uh, the, the services that they need, and those two winners will explain what they will need from their end rents, uh, but also uh, the expert help, the, the support that I mentioned, are, uh, is being offered as part of the prize. Uh, well, this is 2015 and you see that uh, we have participants, uh, researchers from all over the globe, primarily in Europe and, and in the US, but also in, uh, in Rio de Janeiro, in Brazil, and in, uh, in, in Australia, and in, in, in Moscow as well. So it's really becoming a, uh, a global contest. Well, this was uh, uh, an example of four projects that participated in the 2013 edition. A uh, little bit more detail about that. Uh, this first one is about climate change. It's uh, led by um, a researcher from the US and they cooperate with the National Institute for Meteorology in the, in the Netherlands, which is called KNME. Uh, they need uh, 8 gigabits of throughput and, and well, you can imagine that if you need something like that for your researchers, uh, a standard uh, IP connection uh, with best effort uh, service class is not going to be good enough even if you have a 10 gigabit uh, pipe from your institution to the to the national network 
uh, you're not going to get uh, 8 gigabits or maybe during the night, but not sustained. And uh, your sustained uh, connectivity is needed. Um, and nice for us is that this, uh, this was 2013, so in the meantime, it has been used for three years. And the National Institute in the Netherlands for Meteorology has decided that they will keep the 10 gigabit link. Uh, and they are also going to pay for that. So they were able to use this for a certain amount of time just to see if this would help their research. And the fact that they ordered a 10 gigabit uh, connection to our network, a separate connection, uh, shows that it is important for them uh, to retain this connection and uh, it has impact on their, uh, on their research. Well, quite similar is, is this uh, uh, project. Uh, here you have a, uh, also uh, someone who active in climate research who is uh, not fully satisfied with the supercomputers that we have in the Netherlands. The National Institute has its own supercomputer. We have a supercomputer, of course, with NSURF. It's called Cartesius. Uh, so that's located in Amsterdam. But in this case, uh, the researchers were also allocated a computer time on a computer that maybe you are familiar with. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's name is Stampede. It's in Texas, in the USA. And um, uh, nice for us here is that a couple of years ago, we, uh, together with, uh, we as, as European Americans, together with the Americans, uh, created a new transatlantic line. Uh, it's called ANA, ANA 100. In the meantime, it's called ANA 200 or 400. That's the number of gigabits that's available. Uh, but at that time, it was one ANA 100 gigabits. And of course, if you have a connection transatlantic, a point-to-point -point link, 100 gigabits, you need use cases, you need researchers that really need that, that need more than, than IP. And this was uh, basically the first uh, researcher that we wanted did this uh, type of connection. So this was our real first use case. And this also, I have to be honest about that, included a lot of problems, especially on the campus domain. And that has to do with the fact that uh, a lot of bandwidth is needed. The bandwidth is needed uh, for uh, uh, many hours a day, and it has to be uh, sustained. It has to be available with uh, no jitter at all and a very stable uh, latency. In the meantime, it's not just the US and the Netherlands, also the UK and, and Germany are included in here. Let's talk about <coughs> Germany, it could be De Denmark. Does anyone know that? Super much is that Denmark or Germany? It's Germany. It's Germany, sorry. <laughs> All right, uh, well, this is a third example of a winner in 2013. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, about the, uh, the nervous system and the fact uh, that that has some influence with, with an animal's behavior. Um, there is a workflow uh, developed by uh, Stephen Holmes, at the time working for AMO, but in the meantime he, uh, he moved to another institute. Also here we, uh, we, we, we learned that uh, creating a connection with uh, these specs is, is not easy, especially on the campus level. We needed to provide a lot of support um, from, from the end runs, but also from ICT managers uh, on the campus level. Well, this is sort of the same picture. You see that this really has become, the event is now in the picture, uh, PSMC, ESnet, Internet to RMP in, in Brazil, Arnet, Aconet in, uh, in, in Austria, uh, many MRANs are participating, so it really seems to fill a gap. Um, and so we are very eager to continue with that. Um, well, this is sort of what uh, I already explained, so I'll go through that. In 2015, we had a, a, a lot of uh, new projects that um, uh, participated, and one of the winners is uh, Idra Gen. If I pronounce that well, it's a predecessor of uh, SKA, uh, the uh, project in radio astronomy uh, that will be uh, physically located in South Africa and Australia. Uh, and they are basically anticipating on that, um, doing important work for astronomy. And as you all know, astronomers can use any bandwidth that we provide them with and easily fill it. Um, and other example is this one, but uh, since I do not have too much time, I'll, uh, I'll skip this slide. This is the most important slide, I think. It's about uh, the things that we learned and the challenges that we face. Uh, researchers are not ICT project managers. Well, that sounds very logical, but it's really something that we learned. Researchers should be able to focus on research. And so we as NRANs and we as ICT managers on the campus level within the University of the Research Institute 
should act as a project manager and, and keep all the fuss away from them. <coughs> Most of the work is in the local domain, so we started out with providing end-run services to researchers, that's important, but it's not the most important thing. The local domain, the campus network, uh, the campus IT staff, uh, the support from them is the most important part of the work. Uh, bringing together researchers and their ICT uh, departments uh, is beneficial. You would suppose that they know each other, but we have learned in all these examples that that's not necessarily the case. Uh, and it also has to do with the fact that many researchers have an ICT background and, and, and are willing to find their own solutions, but um, that doesn't always work. Well, tuning between a network and higher, layer, higher layers at, at the end sites is, uh, is important. Like I mentioned, we started with networking, but then we included storage and, uh, and compute. And, and workflow support and those kind of things. And then you can really offer a full solution to a researcher. And then uh, the last one, and probably the most important one, is that commitment is essential. So if you have endpoints at a university, you really need commitment from the ICT manager at this university. Um, and the same is true for the entrants uh, and intermediate regional networks that you might uh, need to provide a, uh, a one-stop shop to, uh, to this uh, research uh, project. Um, so a, a EAP started with this, uh, this same concept in 2016, uh, sort of for the same reasons. And uh, these are the two winners. We had uh, applications from every of the six countries. So you, can, you two can be really proud that you were selected winners. Um, and uh, it says here Yuri, but I just learned that Yuri is not the name it's Yurus, I think, and uh, you're first on the slide, but of course ladies go first, so uh, <laughs> I would like to, uh, to ask you to uh, present uh, why you have won, and, and uh, uh, you are representing the NREN, is what I understand, so you are not uh, the name here on the, uh, on, the, on, the, on the slide, you are not Arben yeah. Bogosian, but uh, well, you are going to explain. Uh, I'll put your slides on the screen. on behalf of the Bioinformatics Group at the uh, International Science and Education Center of National Se uh, Academy of Sciences of the Republic of Armenia. And uh, <coughs> on behalf of the group and their leader, Armen Pawasian, I want to uh, express their thankfulness for the award and uh, shortly represent the activities that the group carries So, uh, the group uh, itself uh, represents an international science and educational center, as I have mentioned, under the uh, National Academy of the Sciences uh, of Armenia. And uh, for their uh, research, uh, usually they use the different software and hardware resources as the both local and international ones. Such, uh, such as Chromax, uh, NAMD, and Charum DUI. And uh, for these, uh, their simulations and research, the uh, importance of the uh, supercomputers are very uh, high and very important to uh, manage all the simulations uh, in a um, fast way and for because they, they are in a very they carry very, um, they are in uh, terabytes even, so the data is very huge. That's why uh, the um, researchers, uh, like it's, impo it's very uh, important to have this data connectivity uh, in high level because for simulations, the, the group uses both uh, the resources, local resources, and also international resources, like in Greece and other European countries. So these are the small examples of the uh, research. 
and uh, this one also is the snapshot extracted from the last frame. And uh, the, the present study is aimed to elicit how the SDS and SIH operate at molecular level and uh, reveal the mechanism of protein folding in terms of atomic interactions. Uh, this is a small uh, video that uh, will show the... I, th I hope it will... No, it does not work here, okay. Uh, it should be a uh, video. Okay. Uh, no, it is not working, but uh, well, I will show it after closing the presentation. And these are the list of the uh, recent publications made by the group. And uh, special needs uh, that the group wanted to like express here that, that uh, to increase the system size in order to get more realistic models and to increase the time scale of simulation in order to see processes occurring at nano and micro time scale because uh, each simulation is being carried out in uh, very different ways and also for a long time frame. It, uh, um, and like uh, phrase transition, trans insumerations, and to create a database of biological model membrane systems, surfacent systems. And these are the guidelines that the group uh, emphasized. Uh, find the computational resources to be performed MD and high capacity storage to keep trajectories for further analysis and rapid communication to complete an analysis. Health acknowledgement on, on behalf of the group, I would like to express gratitude to also uh, Dr. Vladimir Sagan. Unfortunately, he has already left, and Ratia Satya for helpful discussions and providing with the access to the e infrastructure services. Um, so, this much. Thank you, and I will show a small example use case of the simulation. Case of simulations. They carry the group carries. What time scale? Uh, as uh, I have already said, as I'm not, uh, I am just pre representing the group. <coughs> For more uh, specific questions, I can uh, pass the contacts uh, to ask any questions to them. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, a round of applause for our first winner. Okay. And uh, this is the award, yeah. but you'll get a better copy uh, in order to. Uh, you're still working on that. This is what I just learned, but yeah. this is what it what it's going to look like. Yeah. Thank you. This is just the example. Yeah. You can bring that to. Uh, to the winner. To the winner, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I uh, really, I want to express their thankfulness uh, yeah. on behalf of the group. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right. Thanks again. And then uh, I would like to uh, introduce our second speaker, our second winner, I should say. And I hope. Right set of slides, US. I think it is. All right, you were just going to explain uh, the, the research that he has already done and, uh, and, and will be doing in the next few, uh, few years. Of course, yes. yeah, Thank you very much for organizing to, uh, organizers to is it, uh, invite us to say some words about our projects because this project uh, started uh, maybe uh, half a year ago and uh, we just applied for for this um, for this call and uh, thank you that uh, you are calling us that we are winners and we want to present some some details of our project or, and uh, we want to say some uh, some we will, I will explain some parts that we have and that we need. 
our team is uh, for uh, for uh, scientists. Uh, it's uh, me, Alena Kremalcevich, Dmitry Denisuk, and uh, Yuri Kim. Uh, First three person uh, works in the uh, United Institute of Informatics Problems, uh, National Academy of Sciences of Belarus, and uh, Yuri Kim is postgraduate student in uh, South Korea. And uh, we uh, understand that we have uh, our research problem maybe one uh, one year ago, or maybe a little bit less, maybe ten months ago, and we understand that. Uh, in our country, in our country, as abroad our country also, uh, there is no mobile application or any, any other applications that can provide uh, uh, historical, cu cultural, um, uh, touristic information uh, for any kind of users. Uh, and these uh, systems uh, doesn't have a possibility also to use speech synthesis or speech recognition. Uh, because uh, we, we think and we believe that uh, new generation of uh, mobile applications or, and any kind of uh, also programs for PC computers must have uh, speech synthesis and speech recognition for, for best uh, communication with uh, users. And uh, also uh, we discovered that there are four technical problems uh, why we didn't have this uh, application for or getting touristic information about the city, about the villages, about some monuments, etc. Uh, because uh, voice data tr transmission requires uh, effective use of input and output uh, channels. Uh, second one, uh, voice data uh, requires large vo volumes of computers to save this, uh, to process this data, to, to systematize the data. Uh, next one, uh, mobile devices uh, can uh, make uh, a lot of, uh, I don't know, photos or video recordings, but it's difficult to save this data on the mobile phone. And but stationary devices, for example, servers, etc., uh, they have possibility to save data by, but they are not convenient to input uh, this uh, data uh, from real life to, to the server, for example, because the server or big computers or high PC centers is a little bit uh, uh, large in physical size because it's like a uh, half of room. Uh, and that's why we uh, propose uh, four solutions uh, uh, for, uh, for research problem, for technical problems. Uh, first of all, is uh, we <coughs> propose to receive big volumes of excursion voice and images from professionals, uh, historical uh, historian men uh, or women uh, from um, uh, excursion guides uh, uh, using uh, simple mobile devices. Uh, second one, uh, we try to um, to modelize or to construct uh, algorithms for voice data input and uh, uh, try to design algorithms for storage them or upload them to the big uh, servers using uh, uh, network resources of BusNet. Um, next one, we try to design output data algorithms for mobile phone uh, also using network resources of BusNet. And uh, uh, last one, but not least, of course, uh, is uh, uh, we try to create special st uh, storages and distribution uh, mechanism uh, that, we, uh, that can help um, uh, create special uh, workplaces for, uh, for content managers. And uh, this is our solution chart. Uh, here you can see mobile devices that can uh, make uh, voice inf or image information uh, using BusNet resources. We can upload it to the storage, to the server, server on a grid segment, uh, using stationary devices and also using BusNet network. We can systematize this uh, information. Uh, we can uh, put uh, text uh, text labels uh, or some kind of uh, touristic uh, trips uh, for any kind of uh, city or locality and after this uh, simple users uh, or usual users uh, can use uh, mobile phone or PC computer to obtain this uh, prepared information 
about uh, main cities of, for example, of Belarus uh, and about uh, just famous villages, about uh, monuments, about uh, uh, places of education, uh, libraries, and so on and so on, because uh, we know that uh, our server can uh, save everything and uh, give uh, possibility to, to see this information uh, using uh, la large channels. <laughs> Uh, this is our target, uh, target mobile application for users. It's possible to see our uh, prototype. Uh, this prototype uh, works for uh, three cities of, um, in, in Belarus. It's for capital, for Minsk, for Grodno, for Brest. Uh, three more is coming. And uh, for example, when we will cho choose Minsk, uh, it's possible to choose uh, any any from three language. Uh, it may we can hear excursion in uh, English, in Russian, or in Belarusian. After this, uh, we can choose object, for example, church of San uh, Simon in Alena, and uh, user a user can uh, hear a voice. Uh, uh, voice da data uh, or audio guide uh, to see <coughs> I'm sorry, uh, to see image and to read uh, a little bit uh, about this object but uh, all the information is much bigger than uh, this text and uh, our plans is to uh, make a GPC GPS navigation for this application because uh, sometimes when we are going to some city, for example, for conference, <coughs> we didn't have a lot of time uh, to rent uh, a, a real uh, audio, uh, a real uh, touristic guide, uh, guide uh, uh, for providing us uh, to, uh, some excursion. Uh, just we can uh, upload, uh, uh, download our application from uh, Google Play using this uh, title. And uh, this application can navigate us uh, what famous uh, uh, monuments or what famous uh, places uh, there are, there are uh, close with uh, our uh, place where we are. Okay, thank you for your attention. <laughs> Alright, thank you very much, uh, Yuri, for your presentation. Um, in the meantime, we have um, created this one, so I would like to hand it to you. Congratulations again.